There is only one rule to uh, panoramic photography, and that is the second image that you take must overlap the first by at least 25%, and then any subsequent images, the same rule applies. After that, it's simply a matter of tips, tricks, and technique. So here we are once again in Affinity Photo, and I'm going straight up now to the top left-hand corner and selecting File and then New Panorama. Up comes the dialog box that asks us to add the photos, the photographs that we wish to stitch together. So we click Add, and it's gone to where I conveniently am storing those photographs. I took six images on that uh, afternoon where you saw me uh, in the little bit of video, uh, two, two sections of three. And I'm going to select this uh, three, these three images here, click open, there they are. And now we click on Stitch Panorama. It couldn't be uh, any simpler. It's almost a two-step operation where Affinity Photo does all the heavy lifting uh, leaving us free to concentrate on what we want to do with the image. Click OK. There's our image and it's going to render the panorama now and it's done it. Now, it will surprise you that this image is so badly exposed but uh, I can uh, explain that in a way that uh, it was a extraordinary day. The clouds were moving fast across the sky and they were full of rain. It looked as though we were going to have a storm any moment, but from time to time the sun would punch through the clouds and you can see that um, it has completely blown out the area where it's come through the clouds, yet the rest of the image is um, way underexposed. But for the uh, purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to not fuss about that. I'm going to click Apply. And there it is. And I'm going to duplicate that image, Command-J. And the copy image I'm going to take into Tone Mapping uh, Persona. Up here in the contextual uh, toolbox, we see uh, tone mapping. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take a moment to load because don't forget those are, that is three images stitched together and the, uh, the single image is quite a large file. And here we go. It shouldn't take much longer now. Chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, that's not too bad, is it? Right, so up come a selection of presets. We've got default, we've got extreme, crazy, and the James Ritson uh, collection of, of presets. Now, there are far too many for me to go through uh, one by one, and it wouldn't be that interesting. Obviously, I know in advance the one that I want, so we're going back to default. We'll, I think it goes to natural uh, by default. So that's natural. Uh, the next one is detailed, which is a little bit better, a little bit sort of sharper. Don't forget, it's overcome all of that underexposed image that you saw originally. But the one that I want, I know, is down here and it's called Dramatic. And um, that suits my purposes for this image uh, more than any of the others. Now, over on the right-hand side here, we have got the possibility to change, um, well, first of all, which is uh, exclusive to this particular uh, mode, we've got tone compression and local contrast. Uh, so obviously tone compression would take down that rather HDR effect. 
Um, and then we could go on to adjust the exposure, black point brightness, and all the other things that you're familiar with, contrast, saturation, vibrance. But on this occasion, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to accept it as it is. So over here, top left, I'm going to click apply. And um, what I could have done, uh, had this image been a little bit more uh, workable, uh, I could have adjusted this, this original one. Um, and then when I came back in with my HDR -E image, I could have taken down the opacity to include some of the underlying uh, adjusted image. But for the speed and the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to uh, leave it as it is. And although this is not best practice, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to delete that image to keep the um, layers panel uh, as uncluttered and as easy to understand as possible. Right, so what have we got left to do? Well, we've got to crop our image and we've got to clean up the sensor dust. And um, I think we'll start now by cropping. So we go to the crop tool and um, there is uh, a preset crop that uh, that I've been that I tried out earlier when I was working on this uh, presentation. Uh, up here in this sort of settings cog, you've got a load of different presets, and this one I quite like. It's called Anamorphic Pre 1970, and it sort of suits my purpose uh, for this particular image but I could have gone to uh, a more simplified uh, arrangement, which is the original ra ratio or unconstrained. But uh, I'll accept this one for, for now. Uh, I'm gonna move the crop up to uh, take into account, why isn't that gonna move for me? Yes, there we go. Uh, to move that up to, put the sort of horizon line on the uh, lower third guide back there. And as you can see, that means that uh, we've got an area of sky on both sides um, that will need attention. We've also got uh, the two edges that uh, need a bit of work, but for the sake of this demonstration and not to have to do too much uh, in painting, I'll move that side in and I'll move that side in and then I'll uh, click apply. Okay, so now I'm going to put a pixel layer on top of that. I'm going to my in painting brush. Uh, I need a bigger brush than that. Okay, that'll do for now. 100% opacity, high flow rate, zero hardness. And we won't worry about any of those for the moment. And this is important. You've got to click on current layer and below so that it takes its information from this layer and puts it up on that layer. And that will make it easier for us to uh, do any adjustments uh, should, we, should we need to. Uh, skies and clouds are always easy because nobody knew what was there in the first place. So you can't really go wrong. And it always does uh, a very nice job, or I find, on skies and clouds. Right, so now we will work on the sensor dust, although there will be other bits cropping up as we go on. I'll take a slightly smaller brush for that. There we are. And also we've got a bit of lens flare uh, in this image, which um, is not attractive in this, on this occasion, and we don't want, there they are. It was, it's a wide angle lens, so therefore uh, lens flare is uh, <clears throat> quite frequent. Now I think I've got most of the uh, sensor dust for the moment. Take out that bit of cloud there, I don't want that. Oh, there's one there. Uh, but also, I rather want to take out that 
tree on the horizon which I don't feel is bringing very much to the mix. Um, but uh, so our in-painting brush doesn't pick up too much information that we don't want included in the correction, <clears throat> I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to put a selection around it. Now I'm going to put my finger on the Alt button on the Mac keyboard and I'm going to come in to see what I'm doing a bit better. <clears throat> put a collection, uh, a selection, <laughs> not a collection, put a selection over that and go to the in painting brush and paint that in and see what it does with that. Not bad. Um, it's taken some of the uh, crop here and put it up there, but I don't think that matters particularly. I'll leave that as it is. Command D for deselect and Alt and scroll with my mouse to go out of the image. I've gone too far, so I'll come back in a little bit. Now, I think for the moment that's done all of the um, correction that I need, but I would like to make uh, this this line in the in the crop uh, crops. When I say crop here, I'm referring to the vegetation in the field, not the crop as we know it in photography. I'd like to make this sort of pathy thing here a bit more obvious and a bit of a leading line to lead us up there. I'd like to lighten that section of the hills and probably a bit more on this, this uh, vegetation here. So again, quick and easy, I'll go to an, a new adjustment layer and curve. I do this all the time actually in my processing. It's a bit sort of a bit too quick and easy. It's not meticulous. It's not it's not forensic, but it uh, gets the job done. OK, so on that layer, I'm going to uh, click Command I to invert it, to put it back to what it was. And now I've got a mask here. And I'm, I'm going to uh, click B for brush. But uh, on my brush here, I've got a black brush, uh, which won't work on a black mask. So I'll click that over. I could have pressed X on the keyboard to change it, but um, you've also got the possibility to change the brush there. Uh, the size of the brush is not bad. Uh, the opacity at 60 is about right. The flow rate's good. <clears throat> and um, I think that will be OK. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's more or less what I want. Lighten this path up in a sort of a, a reasonable tone and do a little bit on these crops. Now, this is not something I would do for a serious photograph. It's a bit too much for me, but I want uh, a punchy uh, thumbnail image for uh, for this video and that's what I'm doing here. Now I'd like to lighten up these fields but I'm pretty sure, well I've got two options. I could put a selection on that so that it doesn't, so my brush doesn't go over or I could select a hard brush. I think for speed I'll just go up here to hardness and I'm going to momentarily put the brush up <clears throat> really hard Take down the size and I'm going to click there. Then I'm going to put my finger on the shift key and click there and it's gone straight across. I think that's okay. I'll just go in to see that it hasn't got some of the, no it hasn't, that's all right. Yeah, that's done what I've wanted. So that, that worked, in fact, that was okay. Or I could have put a selection along that uh, area uh, and then gone in with my brush uh, to make sure that that was all right. Um, I think that more or less does it for this. Uh, there is one last 
thing that I want to show you, uh, if unless uh, you're already aware of it, of course. So um, <clears throat> it won't be much help if that's the case. But for this, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to flatten the image. Or, yeah, I'll flatten the image. So we'll go up to Document, Flatten. And then um, I'm going to um, Filters. And down here to Haze Removal and click there. And boom. Now, <clears throat> That might be far too heavy for um, most people's taste. It's not something I would normally do. I would have probably put that on uh, a copy image and then reduced the opacity. But again, I will say it a second time, I need a punchy image for the uh, thumbnail for this video, so I'm going to accept it. And also, not best practice, but I've seen a little bit of sort of more uh, sensor dust crop up or imperfections in the in the image and I'm going to correct those directly on the image and not mess about this time with putting a, uh, a pixel layer on top because I'm pretty confident that that will uh, not change much. Okay, so later on, not now, I will add the logos and the information that I want to put on this image and um, uh, I hope that was uh, in some way. Ah, is that another bit there? Look, yeah, just goes on and on, doesn't it? This sensor dust. There we have it, folks. Back to David in the studio. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.